What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have a seven-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, you name it. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one before we hop into things. The NFL Sunday million, the NFL Thursday million, that is Thursday million is now live on FanDuel. Put your knowledge to the test and create your best five player roster while staying under the salary cap. Then using FanDuel's live scoring feature, you can follow along and compete for your share of $1 million in prizes with first place taking home $200,000 all for just $9. With your choice of stars like Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, and Darren Waller all set to take the field tonight, there's plenty of big names to use in your lineups. So head over to FanDuel and get your lineups in today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. All right, let's get into tonight's seven-game MLB slate. Again, lock is set for 7.05. Now, only one weather note for tonight. That is the Chicago Cubs. They are at home. They are hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. A little bit of rain throughout the day, uh, could be some leading up to game time, and there's a little bit of wind blowing in from right field. Other than that, we are very, very clean when it comes to weather. We have no Coors Field on tonight's slate. Let's jump right into pitching, starting off all the way up at the top. Garrett Cole, 11500 for him. He's at home taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. On the other side of the matchup, Jose Barrios at, at 108 Max Fried at 10.6 on the road visiting the Nationals. Tarek Skubal at 10.3 visiting the Oakland Athletics. Ranger Suarez at home hosting the Mets, 9.3. And Grayson Rodriguez, 9,000 on the road for Baltimore, taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Those are the pitchers that are above 9,000. And this is really where we should be staying when it comes to targeting pitchers for tonight's slate. Obviously, there's a preference very heavily between some of these pitchers. And on the low end, I'll just get things out of the way. Ranger Suarez, I think, is okay. Not really, uh, not a pitcher I'm really going to be going to tonight. Max Freed is okay. Not necessarily a pitcher I'm going to be going to tonight. And this is not has has this has nothing to do with Max Freed and his skill. This has to do with the other options around him who are simply in better matchups. And yes, Max Freed is a good pitcher. I'm going to say we've seen a slightly elevated strikeout rate from him this season compared to years past. But ultimately, it's not really the spot that I want to be going knowing the other options that we have. And one of them is Garrett Cole up at $11,500, the leading uh, AL Cy Young candidate right now. We know how Cole good, how good, how we know how good Cole could be. And he's shown that throughout this season coming into 27.2% strikeout rate and 0.94 home runs per nine allowed only a 6.3% walk rate. Obviously an elite 3.66 skill interactive ERA. We saw the upside at the matchup, you know, can kind of have, and that's going up against the Blue Jays. And we saw that with Michael King last night. We had 13 strikeouts. And much of the same can be said about Jose Barrios. And we saw the strikeout upside from Kevin Gossman last night when he was also able to go for 10 strikeouts. So this matchup doesn't scream a whole lot of runs, right? I don't think we're going to be seeing a whole lot of offense in this matchup. I have, really, there's four other teams on tonight's side that we're going, to be, we're going to get to when it comes to offense. And those are the teams that we should be targeting. And I'm fine with going to Cole or Barrios. I think they're both great. I would slightly lean Cole just based on the consistency that he has over Barrios, who I will say he has a lower striker rate overall this season, but he's been pushing it much higher in recent games. He comes with a 22.9% strikeout rate this season, which obviously we can't really compare too closely to Garrett Cole, who's up at 27%. And obviously throughout the course of his career, we've seen Garrett Cole routinely over 30%. However, when it comes to Barrios in some of these recent games, he's been pushing it much higher at 30.8, 25.9, 31.8, and 36% strike rate on a game-by-game -game basis in some of these recent starts dating back to the middle of August. So he has really been pushing those strikeouts. And given where the Yankees are currently with their roster with a 24.5% strike rate versus right-handed pitching with their current active roster, which is the seventh worst in the league, there's some potential for Barrios tonight. So while most people will probably be rolling with the chalk with Garrett Cole, I do think there's some upside for Barrios tonight, but it's strictly from a tournament perspective. As I said, I don't have a whole lot of interest in Max Freed tonight. And this pushes me to, to Tarek Skubal at 10.3, who has been absolutely just nails lately. He has been absolutely awesome. I think this is a pitcher we want to be going to time and time again today. 
The matchup versus Oakland is awesome. The strikeout rate we have seen from Scooball is awesome. We want every bit of this. Now, obviously, he started the year a little bit later dealing with some injuries. He has a 69.1 inning sample size this season and comes in with a 30.7% strikeout rate. A 4.7% walk rate is absolutely awesome, only allowing 0.52 home runs per nine and a 2.98 Sierra. That is awesome. Yes, it's a smaller sample size compared to some of the other pitchers on tonight's slate, but he is really, really pushing the limits of his skill this year, and we are seeing it in full effect. He has a 52% ground ball rate and a 55.7% medium contact rate. I love this matchup for Scooball tonight, and like I said, he's been pushing that strikeout rate even higher on a game-by-game basis over his last, what is this, five, six starts, 34.6, 47.4, 37.5, and a 31.8% strikeout rate. In some of these recent outings for Scooball, and this is the type of matchup where we really could see that ceiling going up against Oakland with their current active roster versus the lefties have a 24.3% strikeout rate, which is the eighth worst in the league. This is this game is also in Oakland, which is an awesome pitcher's park. And we know that Oakland lacks a ton of, a ton of power. They have a 150 team ISO and a 94 WRC plus in their current split versus lefties. Both of them are in the bottom 10 of the league. This is an awesome matchup for him. And, you know, realistically, at 10.3, we can make the case on a point per dollar basis that Scooball can go head to head with Cole and Barrios. And, you know, frankly, getting 1,200 of salary relief going from dropping down from Cole to Scooball is pretty awesome when we're dealing with a seven game slate, which, you know, isn't massive. So we are still going to be looking for a bit of value, but this is a matchup I absolutely love. Now, I will also say, Grayson Rodriguez for the Baltimore Orioles at 9K is a pitcher that I think we want to also be considering tonight. Now, Rodriguez, very highly touted prospect. You know, he's up and down between the majors and AAA this season. Um, You know, a a lack of consistency, I would say, at the beginning for him. You know, this is his rookie year. Maybe just take some time for him to kind of get in the rhythm of things. They sent him down to AAA. They call him back up recently, or, you know, really in the second half of the season, I should say, and he has been awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome for Rodriguez. And, you know, just take some time for a young pitcher, and we have seen that strikeout rate come through. He is limiting the home runs. He's starting to limit the walks more and more, which we love to see. And this matchup against Cleveland, I really do like. Now, as I've said before about Cleveland, they're a team that does not have a lot of power. They also don't strike out a whole lot. With their current active roster versus righties, Cleveland comes in with an 18.1% strikeout rate, which is the lowest in the league. They also come in with a 140 team ISO and a 101 WRC+. So this is a team that does not have power. That 140 team ISO is 29th in the league. So they're really not too much of a threat at the plate, but they also don't strike out a whole lot. But Grayson Rodriguez is 9K. He's been awesome as of late. And this is a slate where we have some very, very clear expensive offenses that we want to stack. So I love the consistency that we've seen from Rodriguez, you know, in this recent stretch of starts for him. I love the salary tonight. And we also have to be aware of what it helps us do when it comes to roster construction. So can we make the case that Cole has the best history, the best track record, and is the quote unquote best pitcher on tonight's slate? Yeah, I think so. But man, screwball at 10.3, 1200 of salary relief is awesome. And then Rodriguez at 9K, 1300 more salary relief compared to Scooball. I, I love all three of these pitchers. And frankly, it might just push me towards Scooball in the middle just because it you know makes sense in terms of rush construction. And then Rodriguez. Cole's awesome, but that salary might be a little bit restrictive on tonight's slate when we have so many you know high end offenses we want to get to. So. And listen, Barrios, I think this is a slate that he could go a little bit overlooked because we have Scooball, because we have Grayson Rodriguez. Like, this is a slate that puts him in a great spot for tournaments. So pitching on tonight's slate is absolutely awesome, despite it being a smaller seven-game slate. Like, we're dealing with some truly elite options. Now, let's get to these stacks. And as I said, we have four clear teams we want to be stacking on tonight's slate. And two of them are the Braves and the Dodgers, who are teams I don't necessarily love to talk about a lot just because they're kind of Givens when it comes to MLB DFS, but the matchups that they have are pretty clear. And, you know, again, it's a small slate. We kind of want to just be rolling with the best options. We'll worry about how popular they are a little bit later. The Braves, they are on the road. They are taking on the Washington Nationals. The Nationals will have Jake Irvin on the mound. 
Pitcher in his rookie year, his 118.1 inning sample size. He's allowing 1.52 home runs per nine. He has a 19.1% walk rate. He has a 10%, uh, excuse me, a 19.1% strikeout rate, a 10% walk rate. He has a 5.02 Sierra, and he has a 40.5% fly ball rate and a 37% hard contact rate. It is not good for the rookie from the Nationals, allowing too many runners on base for free. He's also allowing a 492 slugging to left-handed hitters. This puts the Braves in an elite matchup. Specifically versus lefties, he's allowing 2.03 home runs per nine. This is the type of matchup that we want to be going directly to Matt Olson. We want to be going directly to Michael Harris. Uh, if Eddie Rosario is in the lineup, we want to be going him as well. And Ozzy Albies, the lefties from the Braves. This is the matchup that we want to be going. Now, of course, Ronald Acuna, Austin Riley, Marcelo Zuna, Sean Murphy, all of these players have tremendous power. Right. And this is what I was saying about Garrett Cole, where, yeah, we can make, we can say from a theoretical standpoint that he's the best pitcher on tonight's slate. But Acuna's 5K, Matt Olson is 4.4, Austin Riley's 3.9, Albies is 3.8. These are really, really expensive hitters and they're just objectively in the best matchup tonight. So at a certain point, we don't necessarily want to fade the chalk. We want to have some exposure to them. And paying up for Cole may not work with lineup construction. That's where Scooball and that's where Rodriguez come to play tonight. So I have a ton of interest in the Braves tonight. I would say even more than I normally do, just because it's a smaller slate and they really do have always like 10 run potential. So going directly to the Braves tonight, if I have to leave off Acuna because his 5K salary is a little bit restrictive when it comes to the the, the rest of lineup construction. It is what it is, and it's not like we're not going to be having great hitters when it comes to the Braves when you roll with Olsen and Riley and and Murphy and Michael Harris and anyone else who makes their lineup or anyone else you can afford. So the Braves are extremely clear on tonight's slate. The Dodgers are extremely clear on tonight's slate. They're going up against Kyle Harrison for the San Francisco Giants, a pitcher that made his debut not too long ago. He has a 24.1 inning sample size, and he came out on fire when it comes to racking up strikeout uh, strikeouts, but that obviously comes with a bit of downside, and that's the fact that he's allowing 2.59 home runs per nine. Now, yes, again, this is a small sub-30 inning sample size, and the strikeouts can be there for Kyle Harrison, but what we also see are home runs and a lot of fly balls, and that doesn't necessarily you know, bode well for him when he's going up against the lineup such as the Dodgers. So the Braves, the Dodgers are pretty clear on tonight's slate. And yes, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, J.D. Martinez, who has come back recently and is looking great, Max Muncy, Will Smith, all these players are 3,500 and above, led by Mookie Betts at 4,500. So this is, again, what I'm saying. We have two very clear offenses that are very expensive that we want to be sacking on tonight's slate. And you know how we get to them or get to as many of them as we possibly can has to do largely with what we're doing at pitching. So we want to look at, again, Scooball and Rodriguez as two of the best options on tonight's slate. So, yes, I'm going to be very interested in the Dodgers. Next up, I also want to be taking a look at the Philadelphia Phillies. They're at home. Good hitters park. They're going up against David Peterson for the New York Mets. Uh, he's along 1.35 home runs per nine. He has a pretty solid 25.3% strike rate, 9.9% walk rate. He does have a 3.97 Sierra, which is you know pretty good, all things considered. But he has a 373 Babbitt now. That's batting average of balls in play. Obviously, that number should regress a little bit towards the league average. It's significantly higher than what we saw from him last year, which was 313, and it was 306 the year before. So that number should regress lower. But right now, he has a 10% walk rate. It's 9.9. He has a 10% walk rate. He's allowing too many home runs, and the Babbitt is kind of out of control. So he's getting hit around a ton. He's letting too many runners on base for free. And the Phillies, they have an offense that can certainly take advantage of this. And when it comes to the Phillies, yes, they have, I don't know how many hitters that we want to be targeting, four, five, six, seven hitters that we could realistically be going to. Schwarber, Turner, Harper, Castellanos, Bryson Scott, Alec Baum, JT Real Muto, like the list kind of goes on and on for them. And yes, they're also expensive. Do I prefer the Dodgers and the Braves tonight slightly ahead of the Phillies? I do. And their salaries are somewhat comparable, but I'll still look to get some exposure to the Phillies. And that may not mean getting up to Schwarber and Turner, it may mean going to Castellanos, Baum, and Real Muto. And Real Muto is actually relatively affordable at 2.8K tonight. 
So we have the clear power upside and the clear advantage when it comes to Philly, but they're kind of like a two behind the, the Braves and the Dodgers who are like 1A and 1B tonight when it comes in when it comes to priority in terms of stacking. So the Phillies are super clear tonight. I also, you know, we're, we're a week and a half away from the end of the season. Like I'm also trying to focus on teams that need to be winning. The Phillies are certainly one of those teams that, you know, need to be winning, picking up games to secure their playoff spots, seeding, wild card, whatever it might be when it comes to, uh, you know, closing out the final few games of the season. And then finally, I think we want to be focusing in on the Baltimore Orioles tonight. Great matchup for them going up against Hunter Gaddis for the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, I don't know, I would say a rookie this year. He only had 7.1 innings pitched last year, but 39 innings pitched this year. He's been up and down between the majors and the minors. He is not a big strikeout pitcher in any capacity this year. A 13.5% strikeout rate is so, so low. He's allowing 1.38 home runs per nine. Way, way too many fly balls up at 54.6%. Obviously, we expect that number to regress a little bit as he spends more time in the majors because we are dealing with a smaller 39 inning sample size, but... If he's getting beat by fly balls right now, and we see him with a 5.79 Sierra, we want to be going to the Orioles, given the offensive power that they have. And things are going to be let off by none other than Gunnar Henderson coming in with a 142 WRC plus, a team high 142 WRC plus in this split versus right. He's along with a 282 ISO. We love to see that. And Austin Hayes has been hot as of late. He comes in with a 116. WRC plus he does have a 167 ISO, which obviously isn't as as high, but still a good matchup for him. Roll with uh Rutschman, Santander, Mullins, uh Ryan O'Hearn should probably be in the lineup for this match with the lefty righty split going on. And the Orioles aren't as expensive compared to the Dodgers or the Braves, where Gunnar Henderson at 3.8 K is their most expensive hitter. So it does provide a little bit of sour relief. I'm not going to say that 3.8 and 3.4 is uh, you know a, a salary-saving player, but they're just relatively affordable compared to Acuna up at 5K or whatever it might be. So the Orioles are just a very, very clear team that I think a lot of people will be going to tonight. Given this matchup against Hunter Gaddis, we want to be taking advantage of a pitcher that just simply allows too many fly balls given the power upside that the Orioles have in their lineup is evidently clear tonight. So four extremely clear teams, all with great home run upside, the Braves, the Dodgers, the Phillies, and the Orioles. We should be stacking all of, them, all of them tonight any which way we can. All right, let's get to some home run calls to close things out. And we got to start with Matt Olson. Just this, this matchup against uh, Jake Irvin is just too good. Obviously, Olson leading the league in home runs right now. He has immense power. Again, uh, Jake Irvin allowing over two home runs per nine to left-handed hitters this season. Matt Olson, 4,400 tonight. Absolutely love him. And then the player I just spoke about, Gunnar Henderson, another lefty, coming in with a 282 ISO in this split versus righties. He is another option for a home run tonight. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. As always, as always it can be found on Apple Podcasts, can be found on Spotify. The video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page, can be found on FanDuel TV Plus, can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.